People often ask me how to develop high self-esteem and how to feel good about themselves. The best and easiest way is to start taking care of yourself. Do you take care of yourself? Most people don't. Most people have no idea what it even means to take care of themselves emotionally. So how can you take care of yourself? What can you do if you're super busy and simply don't have enough time? With everything you have going on, perhaps work, school, family, cooking, cleaning, and a million other things to do, you may not even have 20 minutes per day for yourself. What can you do then? And is it even okay to put yourself first? Isn't that kind of selfish? Isn't resting just another word for being lazy? These are the questions most people are wondering when thinking about self-care. And I'll answer all of them in this video. And I'll also share with you the secret to practicing self-care. Now, this secret is crucial. Without it, self-care simply won't work so well, or it may not work at all. And you'll also learn 50 best ways of taking emotional care of yourself. Hi, I'm Katja. I'm a psychologist and psychotherapist from Slovenia, and I'm here to help you skyrocket your self-esteem. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of my new videos. We often have trouble recognizing that we need to be kind to ourselves. We also often have trouble realizing when we're in pain, when we're hurting. Let's say that you accidentally sent a personal email to your boss. How would you feel in the exact moment when you realized your mistake? What would you be thinking? What would your thoughts be like? Perhaps they would be something like this. Oh, how could I do this? This is horrible. What will he think of me? This is totally unprofessional. I'm so embarrassed. This will affect my career for years. I'm so stupid. Why, why do I do stuff like that? What's wrong with me? Now, imagine that this didn't happen to you, but to a dear friend of yours. Imagine that she just called you and she told you that she accidentally sent a personal email to her boss. How would you respond? Would you call her stupid, unprofessional? Would you tell her that something is wrong with her, that she should be embarrassed? Or would you say something like, look, don't worry. It was just a mistake. It could happen to anybody. I'm sure your boss will understand if you apologize. It will be okay. You will solve this. We often have a better grasp on how to emotionally take care of others than on how to take care of ourselves. And we often wouldn't dream of saying some of the stuff that we say to ourselves to our close friends. We're also often better at recognizing the pain of others than our own pain. We often fail to recognize that we are in fact hurting. Instead, we become critical of ourselves and we start listing all the things that we did wrong and we fail to show ourselves kindness and to take care of ourselves. Okay, so first things first. Is taking care of yourself even okay? Isn't taking care of yourself kind of selfish? No, taking care of yourself is not selfish. Of course, taking care of yourself doesn't mean that you always put yourself first. It doesn't mean that you believe that your needs are more important than someone else's needs. It doesn't mean that you leave your ba baby hungry with a wet diaper on the cold floor while you take a bubble bath in order to relax and to take care of yourself. Taking care of yourself doesn't mean you always put yourself first. You can be compassionate, you can help others, you can be a good friend, boyfriend, sister, mother, and so on, and take care of yourself. Not only that, if you want to be a good person and if you want to take care of others, you need to take care of yourself as well. Think of it like this. Imagine you have a cup of your favorite drink. Perhaps it's the deliciously smelling coffee. Perhaps it's hot chocolate. Maybe it's tea or iced coffee. If you keep pouring from your cup, if you keep giving yourself to others without putting anything into the cup, soon you'll be left with an empty cup. You'll have nothing left to give. You'll become exhausted, depressed, 
burned out or anxious and you might even start resenting others from constantly wanting something from you. And if you become, let's say, depressed, you won't be able to help anybody because you'll be the one who will need help from others. You can only give to others when you have something to give. And you get to have something to give by taking care of yourself as well and making sure that you keep your cup full. Think about it. When are you a better friend, partner, parent, pet owner, and so on? When you're feeling exhausted, frustrated, when you're feeling down, and when you feel like you just can't take it anymore? Or when you feel good about yourself, when you feel in sync with yourself and your emotions, and when you feel at ease? When your cup is empty, you have nothing to give. So. You need to keep your cup full, you need to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others as well. So when you're empty, you don't have much to give. The only way to give to others, to help them in the long run, is to take care of yourself as well. So no, taking care of yourself is not selfish. As I've mentioned in the start, many people worry that resting and relaxing means they're just wasting time. They worry that they're just being lazy instead of being productive. And of course, it's good, it, it's great even to be active and productive. But sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves to always be productive and to make every single minute count. Relaxing and taking some time off is not the same as being lazy. And Sometimes it's good to allow ourselves to simply waste some time and to not do much. So how can you allow yourself to have some time off without going too far and becoming lazy? The best way is to decide how much time you're going to take off and then allow yourself to not do much during that time. For example, let's say that you decide to take an hour off from let's say 4 to 5 p.m and you decide to allow yourself to not do much, to not do anything that you have to do during that time and to just do the things that you really feel like doing. Of course, it can be more than an hour, it can be a day, it can be the whole weekend or however you feel like it. So during that time, don't do anything that you need to do, don't do anything that will make you check, check the things off your checklist, just do the things that you actually enjoy. By setting the time and by allowing yourself to not be productive during that time, you will be able to relax and to not feel guilty about it. And at the same time, you'll still be productive in general. One of the main concerns people have about self-care is not having enough time to practice self-care. Of course, in an ideal world, we would each of us have plenty of time to practice self-care, to have fun, to rest, to do the things that inspire us, to not hurry, to be with those we really feel good with, and so on. But life is usually not like that. People have jobs, they have kids, they have pets they need to take care of, they have a thousand and one things they need to cross off their to-do list, and so on. Many people don't even have half an hour to themselves. Or they do, but by the time they get to have some time off, they're too exhausted to, to take care of themselves and they end up mindlessly staring at the TV or scrolling through their phone. Has that ever happened to you? So what can you do if you don't have time to take care of yourself? The first thing you need to remember is that most people don't have time to take care of themselves. You have to make time. This is important. You are important. You are more important than dishes that needs to be cleaned, than emails that you feel like you have to answer right away and so on. Make yourself a priority. And the second thing you need to know is that you don't have to suddenly start spending hours and hours practicing self-care. You can start by spending 10 minutes a day practicing self-care. 10 minutes a day is enough to make all the difference in the world. And here's a little trick for you. You can do all the things that you already do on your typical day 
and you can transform some of those activities into self-care activities. How? This brings us to the secret to self-care. The secret to self-care is being mindful. What do I mean by that? Many years ago, when I was studying psychology, I worked in this coffee shop. And I remember this client who always came in during lunch hour. He would always order an espresso. And he would always drink it standing up in one big gulp like he was doing a shot. And then he would quickly leave the coffee shop. I also remember another customer. He was an important businessman and was usually in a hurry as well. And he also loved espressos. But the way he drank them was totally different. He always sat down and he took a few moments for himself. Frankly, it was a joy to watch him. First, he held the cup in his hands, absorbing the warmth of the coffee. Then he closed his eyes and smelled the coffee. And then he slowly took the first sip. He made a whole ritual out of it. His enjoyment was obvious. The whole thing took less than five minutes. But in those five minutes, he stopped being in a hurry. He stopped thinking about all the things he has to do and he became fully present. And this is the secret to self-care, to be fully present. Think about it. Was the first customer who gulped down his coffee practicing self-care by buying himself a cup of coffee? How did he feel during his mini coffee break? He probably didn't feel much different apart from perhaps being more alert because of the caffeine. He was so absorbed in his thoughts that he might not have even realized what he was doing and drank his coffee automatically. But for the second customer, drinking coffee was an act of self-care. It was an act of letting go of worries and doing something purely for himself. So the trick to self-care is to be mindful, to be fully present. And this is great news for you, especially if you don't have plenty of time to practice self-care. This means that you can transform some of the activities that you already do regularly into self-care activities. Like drinking coffee or taking a shower. You can become mindful of how the water feels on your skin, of the fact that you're doing something good for yourself and for your body, that you're taking care of your body. Or, for example, driving to work and putting your favorite music on. You can be mindful of that moment and just enjoy yourself. So think about what are some of the activities that you already do and you could transform into self-care activities. Share with us down below in the comments. And of course, you can add some self-care activities to your life as well. Here are 50 self-care ideas for how to take care of yourself emotionally as well as physically. A great way to take care of yourself emotionally is to learn to name your emotion when you feel it, to label it and to let it be. So to let yourself feel it without judgment. To just breathe and let yourself feel it. Another great way to take care of yourself is to create a healthy support system. So surround yourself with people who know you, who like you and who are willing to help you become your best self. People with no ulterior motive or private agenda. Another great way to take care of yourself emotionally is to limit the time you spend with people you don't feel good with, like an overly critical friend. And also an important way to take care of yourself is to learn to set some boundaries, learn to say no. If you have trouble doing that, check out the link below. I have a free ebook for you that will help you learn how to say no in a practical and still kind way. You can also practice mindfulness or meditation. Focus on what you're grateful for. Give yourself the permission to vent without judging yourself. Give yourself the permission to cry. Write down your fears. Ask for help. Confide in a friend. Change the stuff or behaviors that give you unnecessary stress. 
Do something that makes you feel good and happy. Go out with friends. Learn a new hobby. Draw. Read a juicy novel. Write in your journal. Take care of yourself physically, like exercising. Get some fresh air by going for a walk or opening a window. Get enough sleep. For example, go to bed early or sleep in. Eat healthy, unprocessed food. Eat slowly and mindfully without watching TV or scrolling through your phone. Lower your sugar intake. Stop drinking alcohol and using drugs. Drink more water. Get a massage or give yourself a food rub. Declutter your house. Declutter your wardrobe. Or declutter your phone or computer. Delete the files and apps that you don't need anymore. Set new mini goals each week or each day. Praise yourself. Rest. Take a nap during the day. Seek therapy. Take care of your mind by reading a book or watching a documentary or reading a scientific article or doing an online course or listening to your favorite podcast. Do a jigsaw puzzle. Unplug from all things electronic, such as your phone, computer, and TV. Give yourself a break from being plugged in. Take a day off. Develop a morning or an evening ritual. Sing or play an instrument. Dance to your favorite song. Bake something just for fun. Cook yourself your favorite dish. Buy yourself some fresh flowers. Buy yourself something just for you, just because you want it. Put your hands on your chest and say, I'm enough. I love you. So here are 50 self-care ideas for you to try. So which one will you try first? Remember, self-care only works if you actually do it. So what will you do for just yourself today? Share with us in the comments. Do you have a friend or a loved one who is always super busy or is always taking care of others? Send them this video and remind them that it's okay and that it's important to also take care of themselves. Did you like this video? If you did, please subscribe and please hit the bell so that you'll be notified whenever a new video comes out. I publish a new video every Wednesday and every Friday. You're also welcome to join my free Facebook group called Skyrocket Your Self-Esteem. I really hope to see you there. Thank you so, so much for watching. See you soon.